Thank you. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you, Adam. So, hello, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about KD Network. But first, let me start by introducing myself. My name is Pavisha Dhruv and have been part of this have been part of this lovely community for the past six years. I started out as a GSOC student, and I'm currently a member of the Kadeen Community Working Group. I'm also part of the Kadeen Network Advisory Committee, the Kadeen Promo Team, and a standing member of the Kadeen EV. With me today, we have Anika Kokar, one of the founding members of Kadeen Network, Tomas Canabrava, he has been very active in engaging the KD Network chapter in Brazil. And Ashwarya KK, she has actually led one of the pilot programs for KD Network in Kerala. But before we go ahead uh, in knowing more about the KD Network chapters and the pilot project, uh, we'll do that later in our discussion, in panel discussion round. But we wanted to give a bit of context about how KD Network came to be. KD is always in search of bringing new and fresh ideas by involving new contributors in our community. And for that, we have Google Summer of Code, our very own season of KD. We even have a welcome chat group in Metrics so that new members that join KD have a welcoming environment where they can feel free to ask questions. In addition, we have been improving our documentation and have been making our websites more appealing. And of course, we host KD Academy every year, which is the largest meetup of KD developers all across the world. But we wanted to pivot our focus on three main goals with KD Network. We wanted to diversify our community. We wanted to increase our end users, and even we wanted to create brand awareness. These three, are the tenants from which KD Network was originally developed across. Diversifying our community, we wanted to make sure that we reach underserved, underrepresented communities that may be countries with STEM fields, uh, careers are still the minority of careers. We wanted to focus on increasing number of women in our community by making sure that, by making sure that they feel that they have a home with KDE and they can begin to contribute to the open source community with us. And the way to achieve this, we wanted to create a grassroots level chapters in small communities across the world, where one of the two, one or two KDE members from a local team, form a local team and host meetups and spread the word about KDE to students and developers. A second goal, increasing end users. We want to increase our end users, and we feel that there is an untapped market where KD is not reaching. And for that, we wanted to target educational institutes. We have amazing products that we think would benefit students across each spectrum. And for that, we also we should provide translation and localization to reach across across to reach across the language spectrum and for that and mo most importantly we wanted different countries to adopt KD very easily a, a last goal would be creating brand awareness we create some amazing amazing products like Krita KD and life KD plasma environment and many more and we think that we have a lot of users but not many people know about KD or maybe I can frame it in a different way that not many people know as much as they should know about KD. I feel like there are a lot of people who haven't given KD a shot. And if we increase our brand awareness, then we might get a lot of end users and we might make sure that KD becomes a household name. And for that, we believe that we can achieve it by increasing our social media presence. Anika and Paul have been working rigorously for this, and we should always thank them for that. And so this is all about KD Network and its three goals. Now we would like to move on over our panel discussion round, where we're going to start talking about what KD Network has done in the past and where we're going in the future. And I want to start by asking 
Ashwarya about her part of chapter in Kerala. Hi, Ashwarya. Yes. Hi. So, Ashwarya, I would like to know what was going through your mind when we accepted Kerala as the pilot project, and how did you form the team? Because you were in France. How 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 did you do that? Yeah, so to start with, uh, before answering the questions, for those who don't know, uh, Kerala is a small state in the southern part of India with around 34 million people and the official language of the state is Malayalam. So I will use Malayalam in the, during the discussion, so it's the language of Kerala. So what, uh, what were my views? Um, I considered it as a very good opportunity, of course, because I think when an international community like KDE give voice or, or attention towards a smaller community or a, a smaller population, that can add certain values to the larger community and to the smaller community, which is very important, I think. And though it was an exciting thought, but then it was a series of questions. So how we start, how we can organize, how which kind of values we want to add, in which area, and how can we do that? And those kinds of a series of questions. But it was nice to have KD network meetings. Uh, a bit frequently to gain more confidence or to change opinions or change views and perspectives. And then another big question was, now I have to find more volunteer time. And that was a haunting thought. Uh, but in the end, after processing all these questions, uh, I contacted Subin. He's the coordinator of the KDE Malayalam translation team. And of course, I was sure that he would he would be interested because I have seen that he and his friends were conducting translaton for KDE, and they were promoting very much KDE in such different free software groups. So, like I thought, he was very interested, and we decided to move forward. And so, it was him who added more people because he's uh, living in Kerala, so he, he has more updates about what is going on in different free software communities and who would be interested in KDE. So he added Sriram, Kannan, and Akhil. This is the core group for now. And the KDE Malayalam uh, group has the channel, metric channel or telegram channel, has around 150 people. So yeah, I think it was a good start. It was great. Okay, so I, I would also like to know that what was the first task you did for this project? Uh, we started with localization of uh, uh, translations of Plasma workspace and bit of localizations and translation. Like, because Gcompre was, I, I already started the translation of Gcompre, but there was a lot of things to localize, like letters, alphabets, and I had to add different levels for our Malayalam language. So that was the first task. And we decided to do, and, and it's still going on. This, the task is, I mean, there's a lot of things to translate, so it's going on. And we decided to focus on the localization efforts because we felt that we are not well equipped, uh, not for the university students, because in Kerala, all the university students are OK with English language. But for common people, for example, uh, last year in academy talk, maybe some of you may uh, so Ambadi was presenting a talk about uh, um, a daily newspaper moving towards complete free software workflow in Kerala. So and more uh, newspapers are interested to go towards 100% free software workflow with Plasma. They are using Plasma uh, workspace and and lot of KDE steps and other free softwares too. But for these kinds of to, to for achieve these kinds of achievements to, to achieve more sectors, we really need to localize and to to give the common people not 
not very people not very easy with english to have um easy access and easy way to be in and to you as a user too so that's why we choose to start with translation sorry that was a long answer no it's okay and uh we all know kerala is a place where open source is given a lot of importance was it easier for you to start this pilot project um yes kerala is a very fertile ground for free software and the state government the kerala state government has uh, had acknowledged the relevance of free software as early as 2001 and in 2007, the government released an information and communication technology policy in which one of the objectives was highly concentrated on free software. I would like to read out that part. The government realizes that free software presents a unique opportunity in building a truly egalitarian knowledge society. The government will take all efforts to develop free software and free knowledge and shall encourage and mandate the appropriate use of free software in all ICT initiatives. So I don't need to talk a lot on that topic. So it was indeed, uh, it's not really hard to talk about free software in general. But these achievements are gained through a lot of struggles. And, and there are a lot of free software activists, a lot of free software communities. And there were even protests by teachers' community against uh, teaching proprietary software. These kinds of thing happens, and so the community is very political. So it has its own. Um, so it's in a way it's very easy to start a free software uh, initiative there, but it has its own challenges too. For now. Um, to start with, we didn't have big issues because we are a small group and we all know that all are interested in KDE and what KDE, bigger community of KDE, how it is and all. Uh, that was easy, but then the huddles came after, um, I would say, um, recently during Academy, what I think is now the bigger community may be thinking that it is our efforts, the KDE network is the reason to include all these KDE applications in the education system. But please don't uh, forward this narrative because it's, that could be ignoring a lot of years of struggles and fights from other activists. So if we put forward this narrative, that will be hard for us, the KDE network, to grow there because of political discussions and issues. So. Uh, and that could be a huddle, but now I think as I presented it, it's okay. So everyone knows that it is not mainly as it started. So all the initiatives are from long time struggle. And of course, we worked for better men and improvement. And for example, uh, it was, they were using GCOMPRI of GNOME version, the old GTK version. So we tried to move to Qt version. So things like that happened. but. Still, the major grassroots things were started before, so we didn't have a lot of struggle in that part. And another, um, uh, so the difficulty starts actually in April for us. Uh, we have been a bit inactive since April. Uh, like you may all know that it's really hard time for India, like, many other countries in the world due to COVID-19, socially, economically, and all. So this has affected a lot, the team, and our activities too. And we were kind of depressed, I would say. And then, um, but now it's, it's okay, we are getting better. We will try to reactivate soon. And though we were we were inactive in the sense as a collective, but we were in all in our personal level we were contributing or continu continuing our contributions. Yeah, I think yeah that's it. Okay, great. Thank, great. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashwarya. Now Thank I'd like to ask, to ask Thomas. Thomas.
about the Brazil Network chapter. So to me, it's hi. Um, I wanted to know um, what does Brazil think about open source and was it easy for you to start the Brazil Network chapter? Uh, I'm so sorry, Tamez, we cannot hear you. I suppose Tomas is trying to reconnect again. So um, give it a minute. Hello. Yeah. We can hear you. Sorry, now. apparently it does not work on Firefox on my machine for some reason. So I don't think that it's ever easy on any country because even when the government is okay and even when the universities are okay and we try to start the chapter, not a lot of people will try to go there. So we always have just two little people to work on. Um, I am trying to get developers in Brazil for at least 16 years, and currently the KE Brazil chapter has 10 developers. And I think that I have more than 3,000 students that I've paid from my pocket to travel to their cities and then to teach them how to develop for open source doing a really long, like 40 hours to 80 hours long course on all of the tooling bash gits, C++, Qt, getting from the start ground basics to um, fully featured developer in 80 hours. We do have, and I think that we are like one of the biggest countries in number of developers, we have 10 people. Uh, I think that it's improving right now mostly because I'm opening for people that are not only interested in KD. I say to them that I will help them do whatever they want if it is open source for free. This is helping. But when it was just, I want to help you only if you do open source, this feels like a little bit of a threat and Brazilian people are a little bit combative. So if you say that I will only help you if you do this, they will not do anything. They will try to combat with you. They will try to show you that they also have strength. And that will overcome nothing. So right now I'm helping people on GNOME, I'm helping people on XFCE. It's easier for me if I help them on KDE because I already know how to work within KDE and I don't need to waste my time learning so I can teach them. But it's working, it's growing. Um, we got three people doing their bachelor thesis and their master inside of KD technologies, which is really good. Now, the ah, um, I also got two teachers trying to use KD software within, and I've also got one teacher trying to make, to get one of applications that he developed inside of KD. So this is doing great. We feel that a few of the universities are coming to us for help instead of us going to them begging for their acceptance. And this is really good. This is really cool. Basically, yeah, this is my is. interest. Yeah, it is. It is so great. And uh, I, I heard that you, you were doing some projects for the Brazil Network chapter. Like, if I'm not wrong, something regarding the Panda project or something. What, what is that about? Can you repeat? I did not get your last few words. Uh, OK, yeah. So I'm saying that uh, we've heard that you're doing a project few projects for regarding for the KD network team, the Brazil network. So mm -hmm. it's it's something you talked about, the Panda something, I'm not sure the whole Wired name. Panda. Yeah, let yeah. me get the link here. So this software here that I'm pasting on the chat, if I find the chat panel, found it. So Wired Panda, this is a software created by the University of Sao Paulo. Um, one of the students that worked on the software got in contact with us in the KD Brazil development channel on Telegram. And he said that we have the software, it works, it is good. We would like to see how hard it would be to get on KD right now. 
And it's extremely hard. It's extremely hard because they have some stuff on their CI that we can't provide yet. So we are working inside of KDs so we can provide their things. And we are also working with them so we can make the software up to standards to what KD requires. So we are working on both sides. The software is really good. It is for teaching um, circuits and circuit logic, so Boolean logic in how to draw circuits in a way that it's not um, professional software, but it's specifically for teaching, and a lot of universities are missing that. Um, I don't think that we will actually be able to move the software to KDE this year because on KDE we are missing the CI on GitLab and I know that Ben is working quite hard on that, not just Ben, but Ben and all of the sysadmins. So this is one software. The other software that we are working on is the KDE Plasma Firewall that was done with me, Kayu Tai Uli Berwick, and also Lucas Januario from the University of São Carlos. I forget the name sometimes. I'm too long without speaking Portuguese. And he was doing his master's on top of the firewall, which is quite cool because then he actually managed to do two things at once. That is help open source and help his university graduation. Uh, besides that, we are also working on console. So because I am one of the main developers of console and it's one of the things that I'm touching the most, people ask me, how can I jump on KD code in a way that you can actually help me a lot because I am a newcomer? I said, man, I'm touching console every single day. So if you jump there, I will probably see your code really fast. So we had three people join there on console and co submitting a lot of codes. And one of the best things that console got this year, the text reflow, was made by one of those students. And he got a job because of the work that he did on console which is also really cool for me because it shows that working on free software will boost your resume and then companies will realize that you are a good developer and then uh, work. Yeah, that's true. So that was great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thomas. And now I would like to ask Anika, the founding member of KD Network. Hello, Anika. Hi. So I would like to know, how did this KD network idea strike you? OK, so it's originally not my idea. When I started my career, I was working for a company, for a non-for-profit organization. So I was handling the um, Middle East and the UK chapter. But after that, we found a lot of people who wanted to support from other countries, and we started developing over there. So this idea clicked to me that if they can do it, and I'm from Pakistan. It was happening in Pakistan, and we had chapters all over the world, in the US, UK, Canada. So I thought, why not let's apply this idea to KDE, because KDE has people all over the world. Of course, we have mostly in Europe, and we want to improve the diversity. So let's try it. So that's how the idea came up. And we thought India as the pilot study, because on LinkedIn, we have most of the viewers from India. So that's how we decided for India. Oh, OK. So um, we know that our next chapter is going to be in China. How did you yes. contact them, and how did you form this team? OK, so it's uh, the hand, it happened was Nyokatosh connected me to two people from China, actually run. Uh, her name is Mina. And then she connected us to Burgess. So Mina and Burgess are basically handling China network. And now they have started uh, having events, but not now. But soon we are going to have an event over there where we would like people from KDE to have talks. And we will be also participating in other events in China so that we can attract more students and users. So that's how actually China started. But now, of course, we are having a little bit of language barrier. But hopefully soon, we'll be able to overcome that as well. OK. And uh, once this China network starts properly, any thoughts about our next chapter? OK, I think uh, we need help from the community, because that's how everything has started, because people start coming up that, OK, there's a potential in this market. If they think that, OK, they can actually help us and support us, because we need people who are committed towards this cause. We don't want people who just come today and say after a month that we can't do it. So if anybody, maybe from Bangladesh or uh, Malaysia, Africa, anywhere, if you think that you can uh, start a chapter in your country or city, Please, please connect to us, and we will surely help you, and we'll guide you how you can start with that. 
great. I, I still vividly remember, Anika, when we were planning about this KD network, you you were you were focusing so much on the diversifying our community. And you had such amazing ideas. So what made you say think that okay, this thing will work in KD? Okay, so one of our goal is to increase diversity. And if you see that we have majority, if you would even uh, see mostly we have, I would say European males. And that was something in my mind that I have to somehow bring more women and people from different cultures and community to represent. Now you can see on the screen there are three women. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my goal that, okay, I have to bring in more women. And I feel that, you know, in especially we three can relate that India and Pakistan, we feel that IT is one of the field, engineering is one of the field that we see mostly men uh, and boys studying yeah. there, right? And females are usually not uh, encouraged to uh, like such kind of fields. So I felt that if, you know, they see that, okay, for example, if Eswarya has come and joined us, maybe she's starting this in Kerala, a lot of women will be inspired by it. That's true. Yes. Yeah, so. That is an amazing. Thank you so much for bringing the Scaling Network project. Thank you for here. actually helping me. Otherwise, this idea wouldn't have been successful. No, no, thank you. Thank you so much, Anika. And thank you, everyone. Um, please feel free to ask any questions if anyone has. Hello. Um, your question um, person for today. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So we have. Two questions, in fact, um, the first one from Paul, do you know how Kerala governments became interested in edu and educated in free software matters? Were there activists that informed them of the advantages? Yeah, so there was different perspective. Uh, when the government started to, start to decide, sorry, decided to uh, use uh, computers in public staffs and in schools, there was a public call and the response was from Microsoft, Oracle and a free software community group. It, it was Linux users group, uh, in a Linux user group. So there was debate and it was free software who won the debate. So naturally, uh, free software won the debate because and the first thing is you don't need um, uh, so to have Microsoft government should spend a lot of money. And the second thing is about uh, um, my, uh, Windows was not localized. There was no Malayalam in the uh, the stop. So, uh, but Linux distributions were localized fast enough uh, from the beginning. So it was a very good point to gain the one the debate. And then the activists were more working toward uh, with um, some teachers communities, teachers political parties and communities. So I think teachers could connect that faster and that's how uh, there was a lot of protests and that's how it all started, I guess. I'm not sure I was, I think, from my readings, yes. Very, very, very interesting, especially to have the user groups, the local free software user group is so involved. So that's really nice to hear. And also yeah. from personal point of view, it's interesting to hear the localization point being so important. So I'm happy for that. Yeah. OK, um, another question from uh, David. Uh, can Kerala be a model for growth in the rest of India, or do other states demand unique strategies? Uh, it's already in other states. They are using, for example, Tamil Nadu. It has already uh, migrated to free software, I think. At least I saw in the uh, the teachers' training, uh, they were uh, teaching how to use Gcompri to teach staffs and how to use KSTAS, or they were using Kedan Live, Kruta. So obviously, Tamil Nadu and I guess Karnataka and all the there are other states too moving towards it. I'm not sure it's because of Kerala, but there are a lot of uh, free software communities here and there uh, in India, like Leku, Kamat, me know more, but yes, so they are all moving towards and some are already migrated. Yeah. Thanks. Um, another question from Alesh. How are we fixing the language problem to approach the Chinese community? Uh -huh. 
So uh, what I am doing right now is that uh, I'm in contact with Mina and Burgess and we have actually made, we tried the same thing for Malayalam as well. But because in India, uh, everybody understands English, but in China, that's not the case. So what we are doing is that we are going to translate each and every document which we have in Chinese. So it is much easier for them to understand about KDE. So all our presentations, all our basic stuff which we have about KDE is going to be translated. We have a separate page. Right now we have it in English, but we are going to have it in Chinese as well. Good. Um, there is also another question which could be, uh, if there are no other questions in the meantime, a good conclusion in this. How do I, uh, how do I help in making regional communities? Okay, so we have channels, um, KDE network. You just have to join there and suggest which city and country you think has potential. And then we can discuss it and we can take it further. So it's just you, if you know that there is potential, there are a lot of people interested in free software, and then we can take it forward together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't see any other question. Uh, right now, we technically have a few other minutes before the last talk. I'm not sure if Adam is around and would like to. Uh, of, of course, I'm around. Of course, of, I'm around. Yes, yeah, sorry. Sorry if I doubted you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lichi. Thank you, everyone, from the KD Network uh, session talk.